Good morning, Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Akakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there doing his work of faith and labor of love, truth, sincerity. All right, and um, I wanted to get into a, <clears throat> a topic uh, based upon, um, you know, this article here, which it, it all really stemmed from a show um, in which I did a lesson upon before, uh, a show entitled the uh, 100 and um you know this is uh one of those uh shows from esau one of those post-apocalyptic shows you know and um the lesson i did like a year or two ago showed you how you know that america and the world as we know it uh, shall be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction and you know as we all know esau puts these things in his movies or in his TV shows and stuff like that, because he knows his future, he knows his fate. And um, the last two episodes of this current season, uh, the title uh, of the show was called uh, Democles. So I decided to look it up, and um, and I thought, you know, this was the story here was interesting, and the points that they put in the actual end of the show you know, to correlate with this whole thing. And it was well played on how they did it. And which, once again, as I said, is going to prove that, you know, uh, this place is going to be destroyed. And it was used as a, um, as a, as an old saying or an old story, you know, of old that they correlated it into the show and into modern day times, you know. So, um, uh, Lord willing, you know, this uh, segment is um, edifying, all right? <clears throat> So uh, it is from uh, history.com. It says, what was the sword of Democles? Okay. And I want to hit this um, lesson on two different angles. You know, uh, uh, first and foremost, the nuclear destruction. Okay. Which is recorded in the scriptures. And I want to hit it from another angle. But you'll get the two points from after I read uh, these few paragraphs here. So, all right. So it says, um... <laughs> The famed sword of Democles dates back to, a, to an ancient moral parable popularized by the Roman philosopher Cicero in his 45 BC book Tusculan Disputations. Cicero's version of the tale centers on Dionysus. Okay, it's like it. uh, Dionysus II, a tyrannical king who once ruled over the Sicilian city of Syracuse during the 4th and 5th centuries BC. Though rich and powerful, Dionysus was supremely unhappy. His iron-fisted rule had made him many enemies, and he was tortured by fears of assassination. So much that he slept in a bedchamber surrounded by a moat, and the only trusted, and only trusted his daughters to shave his beard with the razor. So this is how much, you know, beef he was getting into, man. How many enemies he was making, man. You know. Um, as Cicero tells it, the king's dissatisfaction came to a head one day after a court flatterer named Democles showered him with compliments and remarked how blissful his life must be. Since this life delights you, an annoyed Dionysus replied, do you wish to taste it for yourself and make a trial of my good fortune? So he, you know, basically say, oh, well, you want to step in my shoes uh, for a short period of time? You want to test it out and see how it is, you know? So it says, um, when Democles agreed, Dionysus seated him on a golden couch and ordered a host of servants wait on him. He was treated to succulent cuts of meat and lavished with scented perfumes and ointments. Democles couldn't believe his luck, but just as he was starting to enjoy the life of a king, he, noted, he noticed that Dionysus had also hung a razor-sharp sword from the ceiling. It was positioned over Democles' head, suspended only by a single strand of horsehair. From then on, the uh, courtier's fear for his life made it impossible for him to savor the opulence of the feast or enjoy the service. After casting several nervous glances at the blade dangling above him, he asked to be excused, saying he no longer wished to be so misfortunate. Now, I'm going to read this last uh, point, too, but before I get into that... Now, he did this to show him what it's like to be a leader or a ruler. It's very stressful. It's very nerve-wracking, man. You know? And and this is why when you go back to, um, it's like I forget the chapter. Uh, I know it's the 18th chapter. I forget exactly. Uh, 
it just slipped in my mind right now, but um, when uh, Moses' father-in-law Jethro uh, told him, you know, it's like, yo, you're dealing with all these people, you know, uh, you're going to... Um, you're going to be causing too much stress upon yourself. It's like it's, it's going to kill you. So he said, well, appoint people over people on top of people. That way things are more organized and that you're not going crazy. But, you know, in this case, uh, Dionysus, you know, he was going through so much turmoil with all this beef that he was having. It's like, yo, I got, you know, all the money and, and, and everything else. But look at all the stress that I got. So it's, it's, it's burdensome being a king or being a ruler. But the average person... From looking from the outside in, they don't see that, man. You know, when you see these uh, these rap stars, these basketball stars and all that, you see the high-flying dunks or the touchdowns or whatever it is, you see all of that and you may see the money they spend, but nobody really sees the the, the, the time they put in, the hard work they put into it, the stress and the anguish and the pain that they're going through constantly in their life, man. You know, so it's nothing pretty about being a leader or being a ruler. And this is why we have to give that double honor to the apostles and elders a great millstone as them being the rulers over us and, and, and uh, you know, looking out for us, man. You know, because it's a big, big responsibility, you know, as uh, we have great millstone, we see that the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shah, has placed the apostles to har <laughs> in the, the, the number one seat, you know what I'm saying, to represent his people, to be a spokesman for him, man. That that's man, that's that's heavy that's heavy burdens, that's heavy responsibility there, man. You know? But um I just want to bring out a, a scripture pertaining to that. Uh, a couple of scriptures pertaining to this, and then I'll continue on with the next point, all right. Um so this is the book of uh, Hebrews 13 and uh, 17. It says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. As they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So everything you know that the apostles and elders is doing, the work, the works that they're putting in for themselves, and you know the the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding they're trying to uh, expound unto us through their walk, their journey within the truth, and their experiences. You know, it's supposed to be profitable one to us, but if you know they're constantly being grieved, you know, by brothers in different situations, you know what I'm saying, it's not profitable unto us because in in turn, we not getting everything that we possibly can, you know, um, from certain things that they may tell us, you know, because it, it, it could be so much stress on them and we got to look at it at the end of the day, they're men as well, they're, they're great men, great men of the Lord. But they're uh, men as well. They go through stress. They go through pain and stuff that they may not show, you know. But stuff could get so worrisome onto them that it could, you know, uh, it could take some effect on them and it could trickle on down to us. You know, that's why we have to, uh, you know, uh, adhere to, you know, things that are being said, orders that are be being given, you know, so that they can do their job with joy and not be grieved at us, you know. And that we're getting the most out of what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has to offer us through his holy men in which he set up, man. You know? And and it says what? That they watch out for our souls and they must give account. So for every member of Great Millstone or every brother that adheres to the teachings of the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh through Great Millstone, the apostles are <laughs> have to give an account. For all of their labors and their works and the things in which they do unto the most high, man. That's we all gotta give account, you know, but they gotta have to give account for many souls that is underneath their banner, man. You know? That is a big, big responsibility. And as us as younger brothers, we just have to be grateful for just the Lord opening our eyes to uh be in a position to receive this truth, to know this truth, and to have a chance at salvation, man. And, and it's not a, a great thing for any brother within this truth to be seeking a power seat or to seeking to be something. Because look at the examples. Uh, Sha tried and denied. You know what I'm saying? The Detroit guys and all of the other fallout boys and, and different guys that come up against the apostles and, you know, utterly get destroyed through the spirit. And they wind up looking like damn fools, man. You know, this is why whatever seat, whatever position the Lord has given you. 
be thankful for that, man. And don't seek nothing above your pay grade. Now, this is for me as well, you know. Um, and also, I want to hit up. Yeah, because uh, and I wanted to touch on this, please, that's just 3 and 18, because through this experience and me reading that article, you know, uh, Democles, he was actually humbled <laughs> by this experience, man. You know, he was just looking at it in a, a, a position of power in the complete wrong manner. Until A lot of times, until you get exactly in a position, you don't fully know the extent of how it feels or what it entails sometimes until you get in that position. You know, even though somebody might tell you this at a third, you know. So real quick, this is uh, Sirach 3 and 18. It says, many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Seek not of the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. But what is commanded thee, think upon, think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in necessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. So the whole point of this is what? Be be meek, be lowly. Don't seek out the things that are too hard for us or things that are above our strength, things that are above our pay grade, so to speak, you know, and seeking seats or seeking positions or wanting to be a leader or wanting to be a part of the leadership, you know, at one point And, you know, when I first came into the truth, uh, you know, I was the, the lowest brother among the totem pole. And I, I, I liked it at that point. Because I wasn't looking for no responsibilities and just having the understanding of the more that you go up and rank, the more that you're responsible for, the more just as much as you can receive a great reward for everything in what you do as being a, a leader or a part of leadership. But if you do something wrong and you fuck up, you could get 10 times worse than more punishment, man. So that's another scary thing that you have to think upon. That's why I said what? But what is commanded thee, the things that your position uh, and, and tells of you, think upon with reverence. You know, you got to think upon these things with reverence, man. You know, how they say what? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. So if you have a, a, a very high extinct position, you fuck up. <clears throat> it's it's a big shot that that fall could be very hard, man. You know, that fall can be very hard. All right. So I want to go back to the um, matter of fact. There's one more scripture. Yeah, there's one more scripture I wanted to uh, hit. Right, this is uh Sirach 10 and um 1. It says, A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As a judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And this is why going into the other scripture in Hebrews, what that they must uh, uh give account for their labor, because the things in which they've taught and things like that's supposed to be passed down. So we're as young, we as younger brothers are supposed to absorb and see how. You know, they go about things in, in uh, not being mockingbirds or whatever, but following the blueprint that we're in the right state and that we're moving accordingly. We're not doing things as niggas or as other Israelite groups do That's that shows their niggerdom in their ways and stuff like that. We follow the blueprint that is passed down, man, you know. And and, and that's how Great Millstone is well ordered. It's, it's always going to be. You know, duels out of line here and there, but for the most part, Great Millstone is well ordered. Because as the judge is, as you know, the apostle and elders of Great Millstone is, uh uh the rest of the government body upon the Great Millstone through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yosha is well ordered, man. You know. Uh verse two it says, As the judge of the people as himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. So when you look at, what uh, going back to the article, if Democles was to be sitting in his seat, he would be an unwise king because he didn't think that this would entail all that it did and all of the distress and anguish he wasn't built for, man. So he essentially, he would have destroyed his people, man. You know, because he was seeking something that he truly wasn't ready for, that he thought was all glitz and glam. You know, just from him standing from the outside looking in and thinking things are sweet, but it truly wasn't. All right, so I'm going to get into the last part of this article and hit a couple more scriptures. And um, 
you know, I'll wrap this up, all right? So, um, it says, uh, for Cicero, the tale of Dionysus and Democles represented the idea that those in power always labor under the specter of anxiety and death, and that there can be no happiness for one who is under constant apprehensions, man. And just looking up the word apprehensions, what, anxiety or fear that something bad or unpleasant will happen, okay? So what, you the, the more you in a power seat, the more their stress is going to uh, be upon you, man. You know that different things can happen, that different things can go bad, right? So it says the parable later became a common motif uh, in medieval literature, and the phrase Sword of Democles is now commonly used as a catch-all term to describe a looming danger. Likewise, the saying, hanging by a thread, has become shorthand for a fraught or precarious situation. One of its more famous uses came in 1961 during the Cold War when President JFK uh, gave a speech before the United Nations in which he said that every man woman and child lives under a nuclear sword. <laughs> nuclear sword, meaning what? Nuclear thermal destruction, okay? Nuclear sword of Democles hanging by the slenderest of threads capable of being cut at any moment by accident or miscalculation or by madness. And this is what we're in the midst of now, man. Of the impending, the impending looming doom over America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. All right. Now, when you going back to the point of how Democles was sitting in that seat, but he saw how he had the sword dangling over his head. Now, in this show, the 100 and what I like, how they correlated the story straight to the point, because in the storyline at the end of these, uh, the, the, um, the last season, right, you had this one woman that said to, to this girl right here, whose name is Octavia in this. Uh, she's a you know a warrior chick, one of the leaders, and that's another thing Esau you know trumping up the woman right uh, as leaders. So yeah, here's a better picture of her. So uh, it was one other leader that was a woman said to her, she was like, you know where you failed as a leader because you like power. You know what I'm saying? And that goes to show you that what she was looking for a seat, and and she truly destroyed her people when you look at this show. She truly destroyed her people because she was all looking about the power. She wasn't humble about anything and doing things how she saw fit. Now, there was this other guy uh, that came out of nowhere also seeking power. And everybody didn't notice, but there were nuclear bombs, uh, uh, nuclear weapons that were hanging in outer space. And all he had to do was press in the security code. And now those, bomb those nuclear weapons came down and destroyed the earth as we know it for a second time, man. So I like how they did the beautiful representation of the sword of Democles, showing that that sword, that nuclear destruction was literally hanging over their head. And this is how you know this is a world, world renowned saying if you had the president mentioning this and saying that every man, woman, and child lives under a nuclear sword of Democles hanging by the slenderest of threads capable of being cut at any moment by accident or miscalculation or by madness. So all we truly waiting for now, hey, the, the impending nuclear doom is waiting. All is here. All we're waiting for is Yahweh Bashmi Shah to uh, allow the rest of these prophecies to roll and for him to uh, uh, cut the cord, so to speak, to, to cut that cord of thread so that the nuclear weapons can be shot off to the different ends of the earth, man. You know, and this is all throughout the scriptures, and Esau knows this, and, and I, I like how they did it. He, he's an evil genius, but I, I like how they played this out. And this is beautiful. I thought that this would be some beautiful edification to bring out to the brothers. You know what I'm saying? That's why I wanted to uh, do this uh, lesson, right? So I'll just bring out a couple of scriptures, right? And I wish I could play the clip, but I know Esau would probably, uh, you know, copyright, you know, give me a strike or something if I put the clip in. But uh, brothers should watch the show. It's a good show, like I said, about uh, post-apocalyptic, you know what I mean, stuff and life on Earth after the world has been destroyed and all of that. It's a, a pretty good show, all right? So uh, a couple scriptures. Um, yeah, let me start off here. It's uh, Isaiah 54 and 16. It says, Behold, I've created the smith that blow off the coals and the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I've created the waster to destroy. And that's them ICBM nuclear missiles, man. That these different countries have, America, Russia, India, 
you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, China, you know what I'm saying, all these different nations that have these nuclear capabilities, all right, North Korea, okay, uh, so the, the Lord uh, brought these things about, you know, to destroy, and to destroy this, this despicable world as we know it, man, that's full with homosexuals, wickedness, and, and just all types of abominations, man, all right, so this is Jeremiah 50 and 35, it says, a sword is upon the Chaldeans, Okay, upon what the modern wise men of Edom, okay, in its present time. A sword is upon the Chaldean, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dope. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. Because what, America is filled with... Uh, you know, generally getting into these uh, scriptures, you know what I'm saying, especially in uh, Jeremiah, you know, a lot of things refer to old Babylon, but as well could be mentioned uh, for modern day Babylon, okay? So, uh, yeah, so I read this again, it says, A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. So what, America is has to be the most diverse place with different nationalities upon the face of the earth man. that's why this is uh that's a part of the reason why this is what the great hall because all these other nations come in and you know uh finger pop america get their riches and then stab out man you know they get their goods and stab out so it says and they shall become as women a sword is upon her treasures and they shall be robbed all right and just uh one last scripture uh to bring out okay <clears throat> This is uh, Isaiah 30, it's like Isaiah 13, and um, <clears throat> and I'll start at verse 15. It says, every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall the but shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You know, the Medes in uh, these present time represents, well, the Russians, you know, that land mass, because Russia is heavy what with nuclear capability, you know, uh, but they're a big major part of that sword of democracy, so to speak, man, you know. Uh, verse 18, it says, their bowls, meaning what? Uh, the, the nuclear weapons shall also shall dash the young men to pieces what the men of war, okay? Uh, through this world war's war, that, that's also impending, all right? It says, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, a.k.a. America, all right? The glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when uh, the Mosah overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So how did Sodom and Gomorrah end? With fire. How's America going to end? With fire, nuclear fire. That sword of Democles, so to speak, man. And as I said, and it showed the 100, and the reason why it's called the 100, because what America, America as well as the world, various parts of the world, was destroyed by thermonuclear fire, and people had to go up in the outer space until the Earth was inhabitable again, and they sent down 100 people to test it out. Now, through a process of time, <laughs> this whole thing happened all over again with the Sword of Democles and nuclear uh, weaponry was dropped on uh, the world again, so they had to go back up into outer space, man. You know, this is all fictional according to Esau, but we know these different things that Esau is going to uh, try to flee out into the, to the uh, out into space, out into the heavens, and you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. We know those type of things are, are going to be taking place, but overall, Esau thinking they're going to be going back and forth and in and out of space like they're going to be enjoying the fruits of their labors that the America destroyed. That's totally inaccurate, man, you know. But, um, you know, with that, you know, just like I said, I hope this segment was edifying. And I, you know, I thought this was something pretty interesting that I could bring out, you know what I'm saying, and uh, of edification, you know. So uh, with that, you know, I'd like to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakudash, the Bawans to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there doing this work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. Shalom.